So I started training at 2002, graduated in 2005. Uh, if you count school plays before that, a bit longer, but I, I sort of don't. I guess 2002 is when I started uh, drama school. Ooh, good question. Um, a sort of different ones, really. I guess um, for the wrong reasons, I got to go to Tunisia for a month with a load of lads and film a war film, which was basically just a stag night with guns and explosions. So that was great. Um, I I was able to put my mum in a box in the not like a little box, like a like a theatre box. Yeah, she's still alive, still with us. Um, in a box at the Wyndham Theatre, um, and she was able to watch me in the Shawshank Redemption, which was amazing. That was a great feeling just to be able to give back. Um, and I guess the other uh, final one um, would be uh, opening um, the first full-length play at my own venue in the lead, which is quite selfish, really, isn't it? It's a bit egotistical, but never mind. Um, so, yeah, when, when both sides surrender, I was the lead in that, and that was at, um, uh, at the old 53-2. So I guess that was you know, it's a, a bit of a mixed bag there and West End theatre film, fringe theatre. Yeah, all different things. So, top tips. Um, I think um, 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 the one that everyone's going to say is just keep training. I learned far more after I'd left drama school than when I was in drama school, just because of the nature of the beast. You learn all this stuff, you don't know why you're learning it, and then five years down the line you go, oh, that's what they were talking about. Um, and the other one, which is which is sort of um, become apparent to me uh, as I've moved on in my career, is um, the difference between dedication and dedication. Um, it's all very well being dedicated, and you absolutely need to be dedicated. Um, but if you keep banging your head against a brick wall, all you're gonna do is make your head bleed. Um, and sometimes you might need to take a side step, even a backward step, in order to get around that wall. And there's so many people, someone tweeted the other day that they'd spent, oh, I've spent three nights in my car just to get this gig. Now I read that and went, don't do that. Don't do that, pay the bills. Make sure your mental health's fine. Make sure you're happy. That's dedication. That's not gonna get you, that's ridiculous. Um, as, as someone tweeted, and these, uh, these the, 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 you know, they might, they might watch this, that's fine. I think someone quoted, um, was it Samuel L. Jackson saying, if you hang around a barber's long enough, someone's gonna cut your hair. Well, that's just not true. If you hang around a barber's long enough, someone's gonna probably say, you're gonna pay for a haircut, or I'm phoning the police. Like, Having that dedication, that passion is really, really important. Of course it is, and you absolutely need it. But we only hear about these success stories about people banging down the door because they're in the mainframe, they're in the mainstream media, so we hear about those. There are lots of other people who have started acting, stopped. I've got a dear friend who became a camera assistant for two years and has now gone back to acting, and she's absolutely smashing it. Um, like, just, just making yourself unhappy and, and making yourself unwell is not the way to succeed in acting. And sometimes just going, you know what, I'm gonna take a step back is absolutely fine. It's, it's not life or death, despite what people talk about. It really isn't. Um, it's a job. And um, dedication is important. Dedication just means you're doing it all wrong. Find something else to do. It's not quitting. And a lot of people think that that is quit. A lot of people are like, ah, I can't quit. Quitting's failure. No, it's not. Absolutely not. Um, how many actors out there have become directors? How many actors out there have become uh, gardeners and are having a lovely life? I've got a great friend called Katie. She stopped for a bit. She's doing gardening. She's absolutely loving it and she's happy. She might go back to acting. She might not do. Um, but just stop banging your head against that wall. Like, th there, there are 19 drama schools in the Federation of Drama Schools. Each of those every year giving us 25 to 30 new actors. Then there's all the drama schools that are not in the Federation of Drama Schools giving us another 30 actors. Then there's all the courses that are like European mask theatre arts in, in the third world countries um, giving us another 30 actors. Uh, thousands and thousands of actors are spawned every single year. It's really, really hard. And if you just dedicate your life to trying to get, crack it and commit it and reading quotes from Samuel L. Jackson and, and Brian Cranston, that's really lovely, but actually you're just gonna do yourself a harm. So if you're at a low point, stop, find someone else to do. Um, it doesn't mean you're quitting. A side step or a backward step doesn't mean you're quitting at all. Just, just take a break, get out of it. Um, well, many things, um, many things they need to be aware of. I would say um, 
there's a, there's a big debate at the moment, isn't there, about only um, wealthy people can get into the industry. Um, and, I, and I do agree to a certain extent, but I would also be very wary of people making money out of actors because of everyone's, we just talked about that, that dedication. Everyone's cashing in on people's dedication. Um, but just be aware of those courses. If you're going training somewhere and you're doing two minutes in front of a camera um, once a week and giving over 20 quid a week, is that training? Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't improve anything. It just makes you feel better about yourself, but you're losing money. Find better ways of, 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 uh, of, uh, of spending that money and just be wary. Good actors don't make good teachers. Good directors don't make good teachers necessarily. Some do. Good casting directors don't make good teachers. Um, there's so many people taking money off people um, uh, for all the wrong reasons, in my opinion. And just be wary of that. You don't need to hand your money over, you know. You can, you can find different ways or find better courses. Learning lines. Um, yeah, I do. I can only learn lines if I'm moving. Um, I can't, if I sit still and go, it's not going in at all. Even if that movement's just being in the character and, and having my like, gesticulating and being connected, otherwise it ain't going in. Um, if I'm learning for a play, I learn to a certain point, but then I have to get on the floor and go through the blocking that the director's given us or start moving around the space, otherwise it ain't gonna happen. Um, and also learn them whilst being massively distracted. Um, uh, obviously, Karen Henthorne, who you've spoken to already, will say, learn your lines while you're taking everything out of your wardrobe and putting it back in colour coordinated while you're washing the pots. I stick my headphones in, I record the other people's lines, and I walk about outside with all the distractions, crossing roads, dogs, all of those things that will massively take my attention, um, and, and I have to get my lines right then. Practice till you get them right. Uh, don't practice till you get them right. Practice till you can't get them wrong. Um, uh, um, uh, otherwise, you're going to fall down. Uh, no, 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 not at all. Um, uh, Theatre or, or telly or film or whatever, or radio, no. Just uh, get them into your body. Get them into your body. See, I'm a bit of a cell tape anomaly, I think. Um, I look at cell tapes with the same eye that I would look at an audition. Um, if I've done the prep leading up to it, I lead up to an audition with the same prep. I lead up to that self tape with the same prep. And obviously, you've got to set the cameras up and the lights and all that kind of jazz. But I see people going, "Oh, it's take me eight hours to do this self tape," and I just go, "What are you doing, man? Stop that! Stop it!" When you're in an audition, on audition, you get maybe what two two reads. Um, anything after that, you're just beating yourself up, and you're watching it back, and you're going, "Oh, I moved my eye. Weird. I'll do it again. Oh, now my voice sounds funny. I'll do it again." Then eight hours later. Um, you've wasted a day, um, you've driven yourself absolutely insane, um, and, and you probably know better off, you probably send the first take anyway. Um, so I do, I'll do two takes, if I do three it's because I've got the lines wrong, um, and I, I treat it like an audition. Yeah, you want to be sending the best version of you, but if you've done that prep leading up to it, you, you know, you, you're still going to do that, you're going to do exactly what you would do in the audition. Don't go on set without training. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really quite simple. There's no, there's no real um, tips out there. Relax. It's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. In fact, um, between the team here, I'd love to write um, a, just a, a little sort of a toilet read book on ridiculous things that have happened for people first time on set. I was so terrified. My first time on set was EastEnders and I was absolutely terrified. I didn't know where lunch was. And they went, lunchtime, and then they leave you. I was like, ah, oh, what does this mean? So I um, followed a herd of people, like zombies, to a canteen. I was like, do I pay? Did they pay? I don't know. And I bought some cheese and crackers, because that was all I could, I was so scared. And then I went back to um, my porter cabin, because it's dead glamorous. And I sat in there and ate my cheese and crackers, because I didn't, I was terrified to leave. Um, uh, just, you, you know, relax. Um, I guess don't be afraid to ask questions. Usually on a film set, they're pretty damn friendly. You know, that first knocking on the door, just say, oh, where, where is the food? You know, where do I get it? It's fine. Um, but the other thing is, don't ever go on a film set until you train, until you can answer all the questions. So you know what pink pages are and bananas. You'll hear me talking about bananas all the time. Um, uh, just, just don't do it. You're gonna, you're gonna give a terrible performance if you are on set worrying about all the things that you should know before you've arrived there. Um, I guess I'm really fortunate because I'm here 
and constantly surrounded by actors. But that doesn't mean that you can't be constantly surrounded by actors. Um, when I was at drama school, my teachers were always like, you guys, why don't you just get together and read a play? And I was like, oh God, no, I've got to go to the pub. Um, and now I'm like constantly going, just get together, read a play. Um, Switch, who are our next generation actors here, they're a young company that formed with us last, uh, in the last venue. They're class examples of what to do if you're not working. They've got a group together and they meet regularly and do exercises that keep them sharp. Um, obviously train, make sure you train at the right places. Um, read the odd play if you want, but don't be afraid to um, uh, watch Netflix or sit on a sofa. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just a job. Um, you can't be sat at home going absolutely bonkers. Oh, excuse me, I just burped. That's terrible. Sorry, everybody at home. Um, that's that coffee for you. Um, during lockdown, everyone was going, uh, oh, God, I'm so disconnected from the industry. Well, I, there wasn't an industry. And everyone was inventing stuff to do and being really, like, proactive. And now lockdown's gone. Everyone's going, ah, oh, I can't do anything. Well, yeah, you can. Get a group of people together and read a play on Zoom, if you like. Oh, come and sit in here. Read a play, you know? Um, just keeping in, in it and being surrounded by the right people and finding your tribe and sitting within them is, is perfectly fine, you know? And training, obviously training, always training, as long as it's the right training. I had a theatre company in London, moved back up from London to Manchester 2015, something like that. Um, and started teaching a couple of places and exactly what we just talked about was happening. There was like 10 minutes, uh, not even 10 minutes, two minutes in front of camera. And I was trying to teach these people, I couldn't. I was like, ah, I can't tell you anything in two minutes. Um, and I turned to Karen, my friend who I taught with in London, and, and people like Philippa Strandberg Long, who I taught with in London. I was like, should we just try and sell something up? Should we have a crack? So we started doing classes in um, a leaky uh, swimming, not in the actual swimming pool, that'd be weird, in a, uh, a gymnasium at the side of Withington Baths. Um, started doing TV classes there and, uh, you know, people loved it and it was great despite the freezing cold and leaky, leaky roof. Um, that grew, a friend of mine said I wanted to produce a play and I'd had a little bit of experience in London so I went, great, let's just do it, let's crack on. Um, we produced Shirley at Hope Mill um, and then from there it was like, oh, now we're a production company. Um, and we do showreels and we do classes, so oh, what next? And it was actually um, via my brother, who's a structural engineer, um, said, oh look, this space has become available. It wasn't that space, wasn't the first space we pitched for, an empty space up uh, near Ancoach Way, and then this one became available and they were looking for people to take it over um, and looking for people to pitch their ideas about how they could make it a, a community space. And we pitched, 26 other companies pitched, and um, they, they said yes to us and then we panicked and then they gave us the keys and we were like, no, no, we're lying, take them back. Um, and, um, and so 53.2 came out of that really. Matt continues, 53.2 continues, but no one really knows what they're doing, which is the joy of it really. Um, talking before about um, dedication, if it goes wrong, we just take a step back or take a side step. And I think as long as you're moving in a direction, then that's cool. Create a company by all means, absolutely. It's, it's a weird thing, creating a company. It's much more difficult than people think, I think. And I only know that from the amount of companies who've come, can we put a show on, we're a new company, and then they disappear, and you never hear from them again. And um, the other thing that's happening at the moment is every graduating year, form a company, that year, form a company. Like, get together. Why don't you speak to the other drama schools? Why don't you all form a company? That'd be great. Um, um, I would say go for it though, you know? If, if you want to form a theatre company, uh, that, that's cool, go for it. Um, be prepared to fail, don't let that get in the way of it. Um, uh, be prepared for it to be really far more expensive than you could ever imagine. Um, and keep asking for free stuff, but people ain't gonna give it you because they're earning a living as well. Um, it's, it's tricky, but yeah, go for it, go for it. It's a combination of things, and genuinely things like the fact that in the old venue certainly you, you got dripped on during a show. It took away all that glass and, and, and steel of mainstream theatres and, and, and made it sort of accidentally accessible. You know, people were like, oh, I feel like I don't need to put airs and graces on here. I just um, can be myself and watch a show. What we put on in terms of the plays we produced was really accessible, um, working class theatre, people um, could connect with it. It wasn't, um, 
It wasn't out of sort of the mainstream ideas of what theatre is, very naturalistic theatre is what we like. Um, the exposed brickwork, and then on top of that, I feel like um, we keep hammering on about um, if you come here, you'll probably leave with more friends than you arrived with. And the reason we're like that, well, all, about, all the staff here behind the bar are told, if someone walks through the door, walk up to them and say hello. You know, smile at them. Don't wait behind the bar. We don't want any of that. Everyone's really important. Um, and um, I, think, I think people come in and feel part of a community because it's small, because it's independent, but because there's someone here, certainly, like either myself or Alex are always here, or someone behind the bar you recognise, or someone in the bar that you recognise, so it does feel like a community, um, which I think is probably the, 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 the reason behind it. A challenge is a funny one, isn't it? Um, there's loads of challenges every single day. Um, the toilet door's broke, the drains don't work, um, the alarm system's not working, the Wi-Fi's gone. Um, uh, uh, bigger problems, business rates, um, uh, um, applying to be a charity, arts council grant problems, um, staffing, not having enough money to pay the staff, all of these things happen. Um, they're challenges, yeah, but they also make you learn a fuckload um, really, really quickly. Um, so, Challenges, yeah, but they're not they're not something that I would take away from the experience, you know. There's 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 ridiculous challenges. Um, uh, people who don't like you, uh, um, starting wonderful uh, flowery rumours about you and spreading them on the internet. That's always a great one. Um, uh, people people liking what you do and setting up themselves. Is that a challenge? Not really. No, just stay true to what you do, and and, and you know it'll be fine. And um, so there's loads, of, loads of stupid things. Really, um, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, there's been a lot of sacrifices I've made, other people have made in terms of personal life and all that kind of stuff. Um, is it forever? No, not at all. Uh, you know, we're only six months into this venue, and this is our home now. It's been a, a five-year journey too here, but we're home. So once we're settled here, then things change. Um, but every single challenge you learn from. So I, I, they're, they're not really negatives per se. No, no, I, they open a theatre, they said, that you'll be really creative. I say that sentence once a day, whilst I've got my head in a toilet, or uh, um, we've got a skip coming later today, which we're putting a lot of rubbish in. That's the least creative thing ever, but it all leads towards being creative, doesn't it, you know? I I, I don't want to pay bills, I don't want to sit at the, the, the desk and, and go through invoices, I don't want to sort out business rates, I don't want to um, um, sort out PRS licensing, all that kind of crap, of course I don't want to do that. Um, but it's got to be done to be able to do the creative things, you know, and we're looking at producing our first player here um, next year. And without those really crap, boring things, without having to learn how to do them, and having a great team around as well, the trustees, you know, make, make life so much, so much easier. Um, but without doing those things, then you're never going to get to that creative bit. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a ball ache, but it's got to be done. The word community has changed for me over the last five years. I mean, there are, there are massive challenges that we do everything we can do to overcome, and there's still a problem of a lack of diversity on stage. All you've got to do is look at the posters out there at the moment, um, advertising pantomimes, which are all white faces. Um, you know, uh, uh, another show, oh, here's, here's six short plays with lots of actors, all white faces, like that has to be addressed and, and lots of companies are doing it. And it's not just smaller companies, it's bigger companies making that mistake as well, and it is a mistake and it will change. Uh, that, that problem is never going to go away and similar, uh, sorry, that problem is going to go away and we have to, we have to keep moving towards that. Um, similar with um, barriers um, for disabled actors, things like that, we have to make it the norm to see different faces on stage and screen. So that's a, um, a massive a massive barrier that it is being overcome. I feel like it is. Um, although I am speaking from a position of a privileged white man, so ask someone else if that problem's being overcome, you might get a very different answer. Um, and then I guess the, the, one of the biggest problems is, um, and this is probably quite controversial, a lot of people will hate this, is that the community, the arts community, has a massive sense of entitlement. Um, 
When you wake up and get a headshot done, suddenly you feel that you are entitled to be an actor. And with that entitlement comes a lot of negativity, especially now that um, everyone has a platform on social media to be able to share that negativity and, and all that bitterness and stuff. And um, I saw a tweet the other day, I retweeted it, and it was a lady whose name I forget, sorry, said something like, just so you know, this is, um, these are my auditions in the last year. These are my successful auditions. And it was like 42 auditions, three successful. And she went, that's really good. And um, uh, there's, there's th that, that sense of entitlement, that uh, dedication and that desperation is leading to everyone setting up an agency, everyone setting up a class, everyone doing these weird things which is saturating the industry and actually ensuring that people are demanding a lower quality than what we should be doing. And I think that's a massive problem in the community. Um, I think there's a problem particularly in Manchester of people not supporting theater, they support their friends. Um, I would encourage everyone to go and watch a play that they think they ain't gonna like. Go and watch it. Um, go and watch people who do shows that aren't from Manchester. You know, it's all scary. Um, so there's, 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 there's always constant problems, but that, that sense of entitlement really gets on my goat. And people, people tweeting about that, I like, I could talk for hours about how much that annoys me. Um, lots and lots of different things in answer to your question. Um, um, but the community in Manchester, the positive is that the community is super strong, really supportive of each other, really lovely, always smiling, apart from when they're on Twitter. Um, and, um, and, and, and I think that's great. It's a really supportive community. I mean, we've, uh, I listed about eight barriers there, didn't I? Um, I think the the one of the, the lack of diversity that is the uh, the producer's responsibility, whether that's um, TV, film, or stage. Um, the producers have to make sure that there's a, a, a diversity that, in my opinion, um, represents the demographic of the area within which that production is happening. Um, you know, we, we have a diversity, inclusivity and casting policy here that we send out to companies who want to come in, which is, this is the breakdown of Manchester's population. You should, you should, you should aim for that, you know? Um, but it absolutely is producers. If you're putting a show on or if you're a venue producer, it's up to you to make sure that that piece that you're putting on is representative of um, an actual population, not a fabricated one. Um, um, uh, uh, other barriers, uh, uh, this might be too big to go into, we probably need another three hours for this one. I feel like Spotlight um, and Equity have some ways stopped representing the industry as a profession um, and that's worrying. Um, there's, it's, it's still the only job in the world that requires no qualifications to enter. Um, if I turn up at a, a house with a bag of spanners and go, I'll come to fix your toilet, and I just make it flood, I wouldn't be able to call myself a plumber. You know, I don't fly planes, I don't operate, I don't operate bin wagons, I don't go on the front line, I can't do any of those things. Um, um, and Spotlight and Equity used to be the, you know, the, the, the benchmark of what the industry was. And I feel like they have got um, sloppy. Um, and I feel like they don't represent the industry. And again, that's an unpopular opinion. And I think um, a lot of people hate me saying this. Um, getting on Spotlight now has become a game for a lot of actors. How do you get on Spotlight? What do you do? All oh, right, well, I just lied about this credit. Well, hang on a minute. What? You know, um, I lied. Uh, I lied about getting my Corgi gas engineer qualifications. Well, don't do that. You know, but it's okay to do that um, as an actor. So that that kind of um, that kind of weird thing that's happening in the industry and that oversaturation is. Um, I think it has to start with um, spotlight and, and equity, and I don't know how they do that, but um, discussions should be happening. It's a tough one, isn't it? Um, agents are the holy grail. When I was at drama school, I was really fortunate enough to be able to graduate with a showcase in front of um, agents, and then I got signed. So, you know, again, I'm really privileged and really lucky to have had an agent. Um, everyone looks at agents as this, this chalice of like, ah, we have to get an agent. You don't, actually. Um, if you don't have an agent, my advice would just be crack on. There's a lot of work out there. I mean, um, 
uh, it's all over social media now, isn't it? It's a great casting platform. Um, get yourself a good headshot, get yourself a good showreel. Um, do some free work. Everyone hates free work. Everyone slags it off, actually. I, um, I've done free work. And I'm not saying, like, oh, do an advert for Heineken for free. They've got the money, do you know what I mean? But get some student projects, get some credits on your CV. Um, uh, you know, as long as you are moving, that's dedication, not dedication. Um, and if you've not got an agent, don't sign with um, uh, my mum, who could quite easily set up an agency. And because of that dedication and that desperation, people would sign with her. She hasn't got a clue, my mum, and she doesn't. She won't mind me saying that. Um, but yeah, like there's so many agents out there who just set up. Like, do your research, find out if they're a good agent. Just look at their website. Do those headshots look like professional headshots or do they look a bit naff? They look a bit naff. Well, that agent has signed an actor with a naff headshot. Do you then respect that agency? No, don't sign with them. Don't sell your soul. You can do better with a with no agent that sometimes than with a with a, a duff agent. Just crack on, keep finding your work. If it's meant to be, it will be. And if you keep moving, then that's dedication. Show really should just look professional. Much like a self-tape, um, you're saying to everyone who watches that, this is me giving something um, that represents my professional attitude and the, the, the quality of my work. Uh, if it's filmed on a potato, it's going to look rubbish. And I'm going to look at that and go, they filmed it on a potato, they have no respect for their own career or the industry, I don't want to work with them. Um, now, there are showreel companies out there that charge £400 a scene. There are showreel companies out there that charge £100 a scene. Um, uh, from what I've seen, yes, there's a difference between the £100 and the £400, but not enough for me personally to pay that. Um, a casting director isn't going to watch a £400 scene and go, my God, they're amazing. That was filmed in HD with some fancy filters. They're going to watch the £100 scene and go, they're good actors. And they're going to watch the £400 scene and go, they're also good actors. So don't bust your balls, man. Spending all that money, it's exactly what we are going to do before. Of course, I have like, he, he, the man I'm talking about already hates me, so he definitely won't watch this. Um, but um, the quality of those massive showreel companies is incredible. It's incredible. We're nowhere near that when we shoot showreels. Um, but a casting director is not going to mark you down because it's not been shot on a black magic or a red, do you know what I mean? What they will do is if it's shot on an iPhone with terrible sound, with no um, uh, concept of making a, a quality showreel, then they're gonna go, you have no respect for the industry or your craft. If I can't see your eyes, if I can't see your face, if it's poorly lit, if the sound is terrible, um, if it's a monologue, don't do monologues, um, then, then you're, gonna, you're gonna instantly, you know, um, put people off. Same with your self tapes. Um, length, uh, lots of discussion about that recently. Um, I would say that two minutes 20 is ideal. I've got two showreels. I've got one that's two minutes 20, and I've got one that's about three and a half minutes. Um, three and a half minutes is on my spotlight, two minutes 20, obviously, because it goes on social media. Um, um, put quality work in. You getting dragged along the floor by a zombie, dead. It's not quality work. Don't put that in your showreel. If it's one scene of quality, Absolutely fantastic. Crack on with that. Um, if you were uh, an essay in the back of a shop waving 300 miles away, don't put that in your showreel. It's not going to show us anything. It's going to show that you have a lack of understanding of what a showreel is for and what is required of a showreel. Um, and you're cheapening yourself. One scene is fine if that's all you've got. And the showreel shouldn't get crapper the, the more it goes on, you know. Just, just stop putting that stuff at the end. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for you. Scenes that are you. Um, so n n if you've got the budget to do dragons and, and castles, that's, um, that's amazing, you know? Period scenes are really hard to shoot because you've got to go for it. You've got to find a location, a costume, and all that kind of stuff. Um, um, again, if you've got the budget, go for it. Um, more often than not, you want a scene that's, um, uh, you want a scene that's your age, um, your uh, uh, location, your um, uh, ability, two mates talking about what they did last night, two mates in a pub having a drink, someone in a shop talking to a customer. And it's, it's quite often people will come in with talking to their counsellor, um, uh, uh, a lot of rape, and that's a terrible thing to say, but it, it's so dramatic, it sort of puts people off. Dead babies, 
fighting, domestic abuse. Like, that's, we see Saran Jones doing all that, and of course we want to do it. Of course we want to do all that stuff. Um, just keep it simple, you know? Keep it simple. 30 second scenes, three of them, bosh. And, and, and you know, make, don't make them all dark and depressing. Have a bit of lightness in there. Ooh, lots of skills, lots and lots of skills. Again, train. Um, you've got to know how to hit your marks without looking at them. You've got to know about appropriate vocal level. You've got to know about finding your light on stage. You've got to know about filling a space. You've got to know about speaking on support. You've got to know about um, working in rehearsal rooms with directors, theater, t for TV and film. Um, I tell you what a really important skill is for me is the ability to not talk about acting. Um, it's often overlooked quite a lot. Um, talk about dogs talk about what you have for dinner, talk about where you go out, because um, there's nothing more boring than an actor that only talks about acting. And um, remember when you go for a job, if, if you're doing a six month tour, you're doing a three month shoot, you're doing a one day shoot, like they want to be at ease with you, whoever you're working with, they want to have a nice time with you. And if all you can talk about is your CV, Nobody's got time for that. It's boring, it's really boring. Obviously it comes up in conversation. Oh, I think I worked with a mate of yours. Yeah, it was really cool, man. Yeah, we did, it was great. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I think this casting director we've met before, haven't we? Yeah, great, of course we do all those kind of things. But um, at, like, uh, there's nothing worse than going, how are you, you all right? And then someone goes, I'm fine, here's my CV. Um, so all the skills, keep training, never stop training, uh, get all of those skills under your belt, and, um, and also find some other stuff to talk about. Easy, save money to pay your tax bill. No questions. Save, all those mistakes you make, great. You learn them, you know, it's great, 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 great. Keep learning from mistakes. Save money to pay your tax bill. It's not your money. The tax man needs 20% of it. Save it, save it, save the money. That's Simon, sure. Thank you. Thank you.